but perhaps one of the most important voices, dare I say, the most important voice, is the voice of civil society. None of the climate action ideas can happen without civil society being part of that conversation. The Executive Director of Climate Action Network is Ms. Tazni Isak. Great to have you. Thank you. Thank you, Femi. Uh, Mr. Secretary General Flynn, the pandemic has laid bare the existing fault lines in our economies and society, namely poverty and inequality. But the pandemic did not cause the climate crisis. And what we are witnessing now is the convergence of the pandemic and climate crisis with flooding, fires, heat waves, hurricanes, all adding to the suffering, especially of the vulnerable, those living in poverty, suffering inequality, and living through conflict. More particularly, women and girls, black people, indigenous communities, people of color, and people living with disability. Governments around the world are planning to spend trillions of dollars on the COVID recovery. As civil society, we are working to ensure that there is a just, equitable, and sustainable reboot of our economies that addresses the need to build resilience against multiple crises. More essentially, these plans would need to explicitly be biased towards those most vulnerable to and impacted by these converging crises. To do this, we would need to put the eradication of poverty and inequality at the center of these plans. This means we would need to guarantee basic rights of people like access to affordable health care, access to clean water, food security, racial justice, etc. Many governments, well, all countries have already made commitments in this regard through the SDG. Now is the time for urgent implementation. Rich industrialized countries who are historically responsible for the climate crisis need to support poor countries to address immediate recovery efforts, adaptation, loss and damage, and building resilience in line with their equity and fair shares. And they can start by fulfilling their commitments to deliver the $100 billion per annum that they've committed to by 2020. In addition, rich countries should display solidarity through debt relief to poorer nations. Scientists have warned us that in order to prevent dangerous climate change and for the world to stay below 1.5 degrees, we would need to halve global emissions by 20, by 2030. It is heartening to hear many countries uh, stepping up and making commitments to net zero by 2050. We need to keep our, ball, our eye on the ball for the short-term, immediate, urgent actions that's needed to keep below 1.5. This means that high-emitting countries and industries will need to escalate their actions to address the climate emergency. We cannot support attempts to bail out companies and corporates that are causing the climate crisis, and in particular, the fossil fuel companies. We cannot use public money for private interest and profiteering. This applies to the COVID-19 vaccine as well. This should be a public good. We support the Secretary General in his championing of what needs to be done to address both the COVID and climate crisis. This pandemic has exposed the best of humanity and the worst of humanity. In this year of the 75th anniversary of the United Nations, we should all be committing ourselves to ensuring that the best of humanity prevails. Governments must act to protect their citizens. And time is not on our side. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And thank you.